Hi, Mel. This is Megan Basham with The Daily Wire. Hey, Megan. How are you? Good. Um, so, you know, just to start, I loved this movie. And one of the things I loved about this movie was that so many, um, quote unquote, Christian or religious movies show people of faith being really inauthentic or saccharine. And this was so far from that. Yeah. So I, I guess I want to talk a little bit about that is just um, why do we see that so rarely, like real Christian characters who are relatable? Um, well, I think, I don't know, there's a kind of a, there's a tendency, I think, in most faith-based films to kind of preach to the choir mm -hmm. and, um, and keep things like pretty sanitized. So, um, and that's not who we are. I mean, yeah. hey, we're, we're here because we're a bunch of sinners, right? And, it, and right. it's like, uh, um, and, and we're looking for a chance. We're looking for a shot, you know, you're looking at a way to win the crown, you know? So it's, uh, and, and this film shows you that it shows you that, uh, you know, and you can come from the depths of, um, all of human weakness and kind of be better than that, you know? Well, and I'll say, you know, I don't know that I've ever heard such an explicit recounting of the gospel as I heard in the monologue at the end of this movie. It, it was kind of stunning. Oh Yeah. Yeah, Stuart uh, talking. Yeah, yeah, where he's yeah. like, you know, here's how you're saved. I go, even in Christian movies, you don't really hear that that much. No, you don't. And 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 about how he he uh, he sort of uh, thanks God for his suffering, and it's he, he's not he's not praying for an easy life, but the you know the grace to to live a difficult one. You know, it's like uh, it's a good it's a good uh, a good thing because we're all every one of us has got a boulder that we're dragging around somewhere. We're all going to get knocked over. We're all going to, you know, we all got a burden that we have to, to go through some more than others, you know, and he had a, he had a heavy one, but man, he was an, an example of how to sort of triumph over that and, and, you know, weave gold out of it, you know? Well, and so different to not be a prosperity story where, Hey, trust God and you win the football game at the end. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you, you don't necessarily win in this life. That's not what it's about, you know? Well, and one of the other things I really liked was the line where he said, no one wants to hear the gospel from the mouth of a gangster. And I kind of <laughs> went, that's exactly what we need. I, you know, there's a lot of um, maybe you might say feminized or ineff inoffensive portraits of faith and Christianity and Jesus. And I, I'm looking for a better word, but masculine was the way I might describe this movie. This was almost like a guy's Christian movie. Well, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a guy who's a man and he's, he's, and, and he has all the, the venal qualities that most men have. And, um, he, he approaches it from that aspect of who he is. And, and, uh, um, and, uh, you get to see what he learns about humility. I think, you know, he goes from being prideful to being humble. Well, I was just going to say, talking about, you know, Bible movies in general, we obviously can't not talk about the passion. So why do you think um, the passion resonated in a way that so few Bible-based movies do? And where are you at with the resurrection? Um, why did it resonate? Well, I mean, it was a pretty powerful story. I think um, I was just trying to be as true to the Gospels as I could, yet interpret them with my eye and, um, you know, through the eyes of, you know, art that I'd witnessed over the years and music and everything else. So I think it was a very um, potent story and, and seen from an aspect that, I don't think anyone ever saw before was the degree of suffering. So, um, and, and the willingness to do that, which is again, total humility. Um, uh, so, you know, it worked on that level because uh, I think it gave people a new understanding of what kind, what they were involved in when they, when they go to worship or when they think about, you know, God. I also got to ask, just to wrap it up, uh, you know, I'm with the Daily Wire. We are making entertainment now. And we've got D your buddy Dallas Sanye is working for us. So I would be remiss for all of our Daily Wire audience if I didn't ask, when are you going to come make a movie with Dallas Sanye for the Daily Wire? Um, I don't know. Maybe one day uh, soon again. I enjoyed working with him last time. So that's cool. And uh, I think uh, as far as resurrection goes, probably a couple of years out. But I'm working on it. I'm chipping away. Well, we're super excited to see that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your time, Mel. Thank you so much. Thank you.